and it's also going to be a point, Mark Larkin, when they launch off the line and do their first couple of laps. Because this tyre invites you to have a crack, right now, the next couple of minutes of these drivers' lives are going to be the most important in terms of dictating a result at the end of the race, because if you can get track position now, by jumping those around you, you'll make it stick for the rest of the day. Remember, if you're out and about, and catch all the coverage. On your Telstra Next D Mobile, Big Pond Sport with all the V8 supercar action. Very important start, this guys. We said yesterday it's very hard to get them off the line. Very low grip surface. You've got to contain the wheel spin. And yesterday, Will Davison got an amazingly good jump, but Wing Cup was able able to prevail into the first corner. Let's have a really close look at this because. As Neil said, track position is vital at the start of this race. And for Jason Bright, if he can't beat Wink up on the launch, he's got to get across, cover the line. Green flag, Keep green Craig Lowndes out. Green at the back. Race eight of the championship in the west. Wink up and Bright, turn one. Who can make the jump? Bright gets a good initial fight. Alex Davidson makes a storm up. Slots to the inside. That's massive. He was stalled on the grid and has been hit from behind. That's uh, and Carl Carl's Weidler. moving, trying to get out of this car quickly. He's out of the car. That's good to see because that has taken a massive hit from behind. The race is red flagged. And it, there's another car involved behind. It's really hard to pick up. It's a Kelly, it's a Kelly car, I think. Yeah, it was a black Commodore by the looks of things. I don't think it's hard to see. I think it's Todd Kelly's car. He was starting right down the back. We've got a red flag. You just move. You just need to move around through pit lane. Oh, oh, it's, it's, not, it's Steve Owen, the VIP Petford's car. He's out of the car. He's okay. But he did start back in the pack, so he would have had quite a bit of speed going by the time he got to Rindler, who was in the mid-pack on the grid. We saw a massive crash like this at Oran Park many years ago with Mark Larkham and Paul Morris on the grid. And by the time you accelerate through and there's a, there's a parked car there, then you, you absolutely can't see it. So it stoved the back of the car in. Remember that uh, Rindler was 13th on the grid. just have the cars uh, stopping at the back of the grid, please, just in the line, just stopping at the back of the grid until we um, was just sort this uh, mess out over. Tim Schenken, race director, and Steve, Steve Owen started position 25. Now, when you consider how many rows and then you look at the damage on Carl's car, you realise what sort of pace Steve had by the time he met the back of the Fairdick Shed's car. So, uh, we're... Obviously, in a race stop situation, because of the damage and the danger here, we're going to have a look at a replay to try and unravel what's going on. Look back at the pack. Carl stopped. Oh, man. Oh, man. And Dave Reynolds pulled out of the way. Owen completely unsighted. He had no chance. He had nowhere to go, did he? And that's just punched straight into the fuel cell. It's split the cell. The fuel's been ignited, but there's a whole lot of electrical apparatus in the back of the cars. There's fuel pumps in there. There's power and batteries and things in there. And I, and I don't think I've ever seen anything quite as ferocious on a start line in terms of front to rear impact. And that has devastated that car. That, that car will be just about over and out, I'd say. I totally agree. I've never seen an impact as heavy as that on a start line anywhere. Steve Owen, just as, they, as the cars split apart, he had nowhere to go. He wouldn't have even sighted that car. All of a sudden, there'd be a parked car in front of you. Full fuel, 75 litres of the sucrogen bioethanol, and uh, it's just erupted, and both those cars are a mess. But more importantly, the drivers are out of the car. I can see that uh, Carl Ryan is being worked on by Dr. Carl Lee and the medical team from V8 Supercar. And uh, when we saw him departing the car... He clearly was uh, distressed and trying to get out of there because of the amount of f uh, flame around. And uh, there he is going into the back of the ambulance. And the crowd, a fantastic reaction as they applaud Carl Reinler getting off the track and to the back of the ambulance area. We've got to point out also, Mark, that uh, you know, in terms of the safety gear that the drivers are wearing, they've got their fireproof underwear, fireproof socks, gloves, balaclavas, helmets, all the gear. There's a lot of apparatus in place in the car and on the driver to ensure that this, when this sort of thing, which happens extremely rarely, does happen, you're as well protected as can be.
Oh, I'm wow now. I've got to say, I'm standing down here. Firstly, great to see the guys, uh, well, OK at this stage. But, oh, deja vu, mate. I mean, you talked about that incident in 2000. And, and just to reflect, I mean, same thing. You're sitting down low in the car, following the car in front of you. You've got no idea. Whilst we see it in our camera vision, you've got no idea that there's a stationary car up, in, up ahead. I would guess at that speed, probably somewhere between 120 and 150 kilometres an hour at the point of impact. Um, and, and there's really not much you can do about it. I, I, it does say the next generation of car that will pull the, put the fuel cell further forward is a great concept um, and uh, roll on because really these start line incidents to me they're one of the last frontiers of real danger in our sport. I totally agree Larko and for the car of the future the fuel cell will be located in front of the rear axle centre line instead of the fuel cell being behind that which you see that there as soon as that car was impacted it immediately burst into flames as Neil said, an absolutely massive collision. And I reckon you're right, it'd be pretty close to 150k when Steve Owen has just run straight into the back of Carl Reinler. And, and uh, spare a thought for Steve Owen because the impact for him and the bite that you get from the seat belts at that point of impact is really significant. So he'll be wounded as well and, you know, winded, it'll hurt. And look, at, and this is what I was talking about before. You've got the, the fuel collector... You've got fuel pumps high and low pressure in there. Uh, very often the battery's low and rearward in the car for weight distribution. So you've, you've uh, obviously got fuel and ignition sources separated under normal conditions. But when you have such an enormous impact, clearly the fuel gets away and uh, things get broken. There's, uh, all you need is that uh, arc of a spark and away you go. Yeah, Neil, you, you've got to really commend these... Uh, you've got to commend these crews. That, you know, the fireys we see here all year, this is when they come into their own. At the moment, they are just crawling over Carl Reindler's car just to make sure that everything is OK, that there is no chance of a flare-up down there at the moment. But the, the devastation, you, you guys who've seen it, on the screen and uh, I tell you to see it firsthand to see the pressure of that impact when you know the strength of the car and the amount of equipment as you say Neil that's in the back of that car and and that is just compressed as though you put it in one of those giant steel compressors you know the force of impact would have been incredible it was great to see Carl Reinley get up and walk his way to the ambulance he's in the best possible medical care Dr Carl of course is one of our top trauma specialists in the country and the fact that Carl is up and about and moving is a is a great sign but b he is in the best possible care uh, the crews now working to try and clear the track remember too we've got all the other drivers here just just waiting to get this race underway eventually but uh, the scene down here is is quite incredible the devastation from the impact of those two cars it's just got to be seen up close to be believed that you know the debris that's around all over the track now there are parts of plastic there are there are mirrors there are wings there are, are front spoilers it's uh, it is quite a sight plenty of cleanup required mark Carl Reinless car, the Ferdy Kipchets Commodore, is severely damaged. The good news is that both he and Steve Owen are okay. We'll take a break from Barbagallo. More on seven in just a moment.